ready for takeoff. All right, we're gonna get started. I got a lot of stuff to get through. Uh, I am Charles Nutter. I am going to be speaking about the project I've worked on for the past 16 years, JRuby. Uh, give you a little idea of what it is, why it's useful, and uh, how you might get started using it. First of all, uh, I want to thank Yarden Leifenfeld, who could not be here. She actually was going to do a JRuby talk in this slot, uh, but she could not make it. Uh, she had some other, uh, other commitments. Uh, but check it out, it's, uh, there's videos of it online, Ruby and JVM, a love story. Uh, a lot of in-depth exploration into how her company's been using JRuby, uh, building a debugger based on the JVM debugger, uh, lots of cool stuff, so, so check that out. Um, apologies to Yarden, I was not able to include any of her content, because 30 minutes is not long. Uh, also, thank you to Red Hat IBM. Uh, I am a Red Hat employee. They have sponsored us for over 10 years now to work on JRuby. And yep, that's what we do full time. We work on JRuby. Um, don't ask why. Uh, they, they, they're very generous uh, with open source projects. So buy Red Hat. Um, uh, and of course, cheers to Tom Anabo, uh, who is uh, still uh, isolating at home, uh, worried about uh, COVID and such. Uh, he, we've been co-leading JRuby for these past uh, 16 years, and uh, we've done a lot of traveling and a lot of beer drinking over the years, so, so check it out. He is the, the, uh, the silent partner that does all of the real work on JRuby behind the scenes. All right, let's get into it. JRuby. So. What is JRuby? Well, it's, it's not surprising. Uh, a Ruby on top of the JVM. Uh, how many folks here are somewhat familiar with JRuby? Okay, how many folks have uh, actually run something on JRuby? Pretty much the same people. Okay, uh, so it is a Ruby implementation. We focus very heavily on making it a Ruby implementation first uh, and a JVM language second. There are a lot of folks in the Java side that love to use JRuby to script Java applications, but we primarily focus on the Ruby developer experience. Once you install JRuby, you run it at the command line, all the same commands are there. Uh, we, of course, get all the benefits from being on the JVM that I'll, I'll go through a little bit later. But the general idea is that Ruby code should just work. Uh, you should be able to take any pure Ruby application and many of the extensions that are out there that have JRuby versions, plug your application into JRuby, and it should run. It should just work out of the box. Uh, we don't have the C extension API that C Ruby does. We have our own extension API, so some libraries sometimes need to be ported. Uh, we don't support forking because the JVM doesn't support forking. And different from C Ruby, our threads actually run in parallel. So one process will saturate your entire CPU. You don't need to run multiple workers. Uh, I've been using this slide for years. Uh, some of these companies no longer use JRuby, but all of them did at one point. Uh, some fun ones on here like uh, the BBC. Uh, they use a J used, or maybe still use, a JRuby-based application to deliver all of uh, the election results. So, for example, the last Scottish referendum on independence, uh, that was all delivered, the results, through a JRuby-based application. Uh, I'm not sure, uh, NASA's on here. Um, I, I'm not sure if they're in charge of the uh, Allen Telescope Array, uh, but JRuby was, was, was once used there to uh, script all of the components for one of the SETI projects searching for extraterrestrial life. Fun stuff there. Um, I also know that we are still in use as the refueling terminal for Oslo's Gardamon Airport. That's kind of a terrifying one, um, <laughs> but exciting. So like I say, it's a Ruby implementation. Uh, so let's talk about Ruby compatibility. Uh, just last week, we finally managed to get Ruby, JRuby 9.4 out. Uh, that jumped from our Ruby 2.6 level of compatibility all the way up to Ruby 3.1. And pretty much all of the features in those versions have been implemented and released. Uh, notable exceptions, we don't support the Fiber IO scheduling API yet, and we don't support Raptors. But I don't know if many people are using those yet anyway. Uh, we do still have JRuby 9.3, probably gonna maintain that for the next year or so. It's kind of demand driven. So if people continue to use it and continue to have 9.3 apps in production, we will keep putting out uh, security and fix releases. 
we always focus on compatibility before performance. So JRuby 9.4 has had almost no tuning, no performance optimization during the time we worked on it. Uh, it still runs very well, as I'll show you later, uh, but expect to see big improvements now that we're caught back up on compatibility again. So why is Ruby on the JVM interesting? Well, of course, the JVM is, uh, is everywhere. Every platform that's out there has a JVM for it. Uh, and most of those are very well supported by either Oracle, Red Hat, or any of the many companies that, that do JVM support. Uh, we get, for free, excellent JIT compilers, various different versions of JIT compilers, multiple garbage collectors with all sorts of tuning options. Uh, we get great concurrency out of the box. The runtime itself is made to run highly concurrent. Uh, and then, of course, many platforms. We also can access all of the libraries that are available on the JVM, whether they're written in Java, Scala, Clojure, whatever. You can just import those into your Ruby code and call them as if they were a regular Ruby application, Ruby library. Uh, lots of tooling. It's one of the things the JVM is known for, monitoring tooling, uh, production monitoring, debugging, uh, profiling options. All of that stuff also works pretty much out of the box with JRuby. And of course, because we're running on top of the JVM, you can run your Ruby application on lots of different and unusual exotic platforms. Um, we were one of the first uh, alternative Ruby implementations to have support for Apple's M1. Uh, we run on weird platforms like OS, OS, uh, AS400. Uh, we run on AIX. So if you have any weird old uh, application servers out there that you want to start moving to Ruby, you can do that too. Uh, so this is an example of one of the tools that we've showed for years. Uh, this is Visual VM, uh, and on the right side here, it's running the Visual GC plugin, which is showing the live view of what the garbage collector heaps look like. Uh, so you can see that so the generations fill up, objects get promoted, uh, then it's cleaned up again. Uh, but you get all this with JRuby, and you can hook up to your Ruby application in production in many cases and do this monitoring for, for no cost. Uh, of course, I mentioned Parallel. Uh, as we'll see later, JRuby can do very well utilizing all the cores in your system, uh, so you don't have to worry about trying to manage multiple workers and trying to scale that up, dealing with the extra memory usage. Uh, one process with many threads will take care of your entire system. And then, since we can integrate with Java, there's a lot of fun stuff we can do, uh, like the Prugin uh, framework, which is a uh, bucket-based, I think, bucket-based plugin for using Ruby to write uh, Minecraft mods. Uh, and here, this is just basically modifying the number of chickens that come out of an egg when you throw it. Uh, Tom did pretty much all the work on this, and I think he ended up destroying a world uh, by creating too many chickens when he was playing around with it. So getting started with JRuby. Uh, you can check out jruby.org. There's lots of information there. Uh, generally, the process is just you have to have a Java JDK of some kind installed on your system, which is pretty much standard for, for all the Linuxes. It's easy to install for Windows and Mac OS. Uh, we recommend Java 11 or higher. Uh, we work on all versions of Java from 8 and higher. Um, probably going to be dropping Java 8 and possibly 11 for our next major release, but for the 9.4 cycle, we'll continue to support Java 8. Uh, and then install JRuby. Usually the best way to do that is to use your Ruby installer, like RVM or, or uh, CHRuby or whatever. Uh, you can pull down a tarball if you want, or a zip file. We have a Windows installer. There's a Docker image out there that we maintain. Lots of different ways to get it, but the only real requirement is having a JDK somewhere on your system. And then give it a shot. So here is using RVM, and I switched to JRuby. Uh, and then this is an example of calling right into some of the Java core libraries. Uh, so Java Lang runtime, we get an instance of that. Uh, we can see the available processors. We can see the free memory. Any JVM library that's out there like this can be, just be pulled in and called as if it was a Ruby, Ruby, uh, Ruby object, Ruby class. All right, so probably the biggest uh, use case for uh, Ruby folks on JRuby is JRuby on Rails. And this does absolutely work. It works very well. There are lots of JRuby on Rails applications in production. Uh, it's hard to know how many, but there's hundreds, maybe thousands of people out there that run their applications on JRuby. Uh, you get the benefits of the JVM, just like you would with any other Ruby app or any other JVM application. Uh, and 
I, I still believe that this is the best way to scale large applications, uh, large Ruby applications right now. You can take, if you can get it to run on JRuby, make sure your tests look good, make sure your performance looks good, you will be able to take one JRuby instance and run your entire system, run your entire site. Uh, configuration differences, if you're migrating an existing application, are usually pretty small. Uh, there are a few gems that we don't support. Uh, the, if you're using the Ruby, uh, the mini racer, which is based on V8, we have a different JavaScript uh, implementation based on either Rhino or Nashorn that you can use. Uh, the uh, database changes, um, whoops, go back here. Yeah, slow animations. Uh, database changes, uh, so if you're running on MySQL, we don't support the Unix sockets, so you'd want to put in a host and, and uh, port. And then uh, the configurations for how many threads and workers. Of course, we're gonna use only threads, so bump your threads way up, and you don't need to run multiple processes, uh, so turn off the worker stuff. And I'm happy to announce that Rails 7 also is working well on JRuby. I'll be using that for uh, some of the benchmarks later on. Uh, the main thing that has to be updated when we support a new version of Rails is incorporating all of the changes to Active Record that have happened. Uh, SQLite is doing very well. Uh, MySQL is working, uh, but needs a little bit more help there. Uh, and Postgres, we're, we're just starting to get into. But in the next couple weeks, we will have all of those three databases updated and then hopefully be able to expand and have my Microsoft SQL Server and others working as well. Uh, so this is test runs of everything except Active Record on Rails 7, and largely everything pretty much works. Um, if something happens and your application doesn't appear to be behaving like it would on the C implementation, the standard implementation of Ruby, just file a bug. Don't, don't think that it's your problem. It, it could be us, and we will very quickly fix it, and we'll be doing a bunch of update releases for JRuby over the next few weeks. A lot of these failures are also uh, kind of silly ones, like, you know, the rounding is a little bit different on the JVM sometimes, or uh, printf formatting is a little bit different in our implementation. So most of the failures that you saw there are not particularly important. Uh, but again, if you run into something that affects your application, let us know. And we don't like those, but we're getting there. Okay, so our Active Record adapter is called Active Record JDBC adapter. Uh, we do a sort of version matching. Uh, so the 6. whatever Rails uh, is supported by our 60.0 Active Record JDBC adapter. And then, of course, 7 will be 70.0. Uh, I believe the SQLite and MySQL uh, 70.0 adapters have been released as of this morning. So you should be able to generate an application and get up and running pretty quickly. Uh, and as I mentioned, Postgres needs a little bit more work. Uh, here's the SQLite uh, test results, looking pretty good, but as I say, we've got a few more things to work on. So let's talk a little bit about performance. Um, it's probably the key reason why you would want to try JRuby on Rails. Uh, so you, when you talk about performance, you have to kind of consider what is it that's important to you. Uh, if you're doing uh, a lot of straight line, heavy data processing, maybe that's what you want, just straight line performance. Uh, do you want high concurrency? Do you want to be able to handle a lot of users without spinning up a lot more instances? Uh, is, is it a command line application? If it's a startup time issue, maybe JRuby's not going to be the best choice for that. We have, CRuby has been optimized for startup for many years, so it's difficult for us to compete with that, uh, but we continue to improve. Warm up time, do you want an application that is at its peak performance immediately, or is it okay if there's a little bit of warm up that's required to get up to uh, full speed? Uh, how about the memory size? Is it an issue of consuming too, many, too much memory with too many workers? Uh, maybe you only have one instance, then CRuby might be the better choice for you. Uh, but you gotta consider all of these things when you talk about performance and Ruby implementations, because if you're optimizing for only one of these and you pick your implementation based only on uh, startup time or straight line performance, you'll be missing out on some of the other pieces and it probably won't help your application out. Uh, so some notes on benchmarks as well. Benchmarks are very situational, very specific. Um, what looks really good in a micro benchmark may not look so good in a production application. Uh, you may have great straight line performance and then under concurrency things start to fall apart. Uh, you may uh, look good in a single instance, but then when you try to scale it up to many users, uh, things get too big in memory and start performing badly. 
So it's really important that you benchmark things that are important to you and to your application, rather than trust what I say or what other implementers say about their own implementations. So for this, uh, for this talk, I'm going to do three little example benchmarks. Uh, Rails Bench, which is a kind of a canned, contrived benchmark, mostly for measuring the overhead of the Rails framework itself. Um, it doesn't, use any it doesn't use any web server, it doesn't make socket connections, it's just a single SQLite bl blog application run in a single script and a single process as fast as possible. Useful for figuring out what's in your, what's the, the slow parts of the Rails framework, but maybe not so representative of an end-to-end -end application. Which is why I also will do an end-to-end -end benchmark of another small blog application running on MySQL. Uh, and then a couple notes on just active record performance and about where we stand compared to CRuby. All right, so I mentioned Rails Bench, a uh, simple blog app, uh, the this, this simple scaffolded generated app uh, using a SQLite database. Uh, it's all just single thread cranking through requests as fast as possible. Um, and, you know, it, not great for measuring a real world application, but perhaps gives you a good idea of uh, slow points within Rails itself. Here's what we'll be running today. Uh, I have 312, uh, both with and without the YJIT compiler. Uh, I'm running TruffleRuby 22.2. I believe the current is 22.3, so there may be uh, improvements there. Um, but, uh, you know, like I say, give these things a try yourself. Run your own applications on them, and you'll figure out what's working for you. Uh, and then, of course, the latest JRuby 9.4, running on Java 17, which is the current long-term support release of the JVM. All right, so this is the Rails Bench results that I was able to get on my system. Uh, very impressed that YJIT is helping quite a bit here. Uh, it's been a slow process getting good JITs into CRuby, uh, but YJIT is, is doing pretty well. Uh, I know that the Truffle Ruby numbers are supposed to be a little better than this. Uh, this is what it ran as on my system. So again, benchmarks uh, can kind of trick you uh, if you're not paying attention. Uh, maybe this will be better if you run it yourself. Go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, and then JRuby pretty comfortably faster than uh, YJIT here. Uh, again, this is with very little performance work over the last year or two. Uh, we're hoping to improve this quite a bit more. So what does a benchmark like this give us? Well, we, it tells us our straight line performance. That's about it. We're not really getting to see what concurrency looks like. We're not getting to see what startup and warm up time look like. And we're not getting to see how, what, what the effect of these runtimes is on the memory size of the application. So let's talk a little bit about those. Uh, so memory footprint. This is a, a challenge for those of us on uh, the JVM and modern runtimes like that. Uh, more complex runtimes take more memory. Uh, the JITs have to run. They have to keep multiple copies of code in memory. The garbage collection strategies may use more memory out of the box. Uh, different GC strategies may change the way that it uses memory. And we're comparing with CRuby, which has been optimized for years, mostly based on startup time and memory. There's been, a, there's been work on straight line performance too, but it's, it's tough for us to compete in the startup time area or in this overall size of the process. So if we're not looking at those numbers as well as straight line performance, we're not getting the whole story. So the memory footprint on this is one where we are penalized quite a bit by our runtimes. Um, so this is, again, just the single threaded straight line performance of the Rails bench. CRuby is able to run at about 80 to 90 megabytes or so on my system. Uh, JRuby and TruffleRuby using a bit more. Uh, now these numbers can be tuned. Uh, the JVM tries to use a lot of memory to give its garbage collector room to breathe. You can choke that down a bit. Uh, and for example, this benchmark could probably run with a 200 megabyte heap or run in a 300 megabyte JRuby process if you tuned it a little bit. And I assume that there's something you could do with uh, TruffleRuby to reduce this as well. So warm up time. Uh, again, trying to be honest about some of these performance results. You can get things running faster on these implementations, but there, there are other penalties. Uh, in a runtime like JRuby, basically everything starts out interpreted. Uh, not even just JRuby itself, but the Java string implementation, the Java list implementations. All of this starts cold, and it all has to JIT and warm up. So that lengthens the amount of time it takes to get to full speed performance. 
Uh, the GC also will be adjusting heap sizes and changing strategies as your application runs. It may take a while for it to get to that sweet spot where it's using a minimum amount of CPU to run. Uh, the, we know that these are issues. We're always trying to improve our warm-up time. We're always trying to reduce our memory footprint. And really, you can help by letting us know whether your application is, seems to be taking too much memory or if it never seems to get up to speed. Uh, but uh, we continue to improve this all the time. So let's take a look at warm-up as the second, hand, second uh, piece of this here. Uh, CRuby with YJIT, it, it does improve over time, but it gets, gets up to speed pretty quickly. Uh, along the bottom, this is iterations of the uh, Rails bench, benchmark. It loops multiple times, uh, doing 2,000 requests each time. Uh, and so on my run, by about the 10th iteration, uh, CRuby was pretty much up to the full speed that it was going to have and stabilized. Uh, JRuby uh, only takes about six of those iterations to get to a stable performance level, uh, but you have to consider this. You put an application in production with JRuby, those first, you know, uh, 60 to 120,000 requests may slowly increase in performance. The early ones may be a little bit slower. Uh, some people will use a script to warm up their application after they deploy it to production, um, and some, some folks don't care too much about this. Their applications run pretty quickly, get lots of requests, and warm up pretty fast. Uh, if we overlay these, we can see JRuby basically passes CRuby with YJIT about the sixth iteration of this benchmark. And then similarly, Truffle Ruby, uh, it takes a while to, to get up to its stable performance. It's actually much longer than this. Uh, on my system, it took about 70 iterations of these 2,000 requests for the performance to finally stabilize. And it eventually does get there, and it, it should be fast, and it should run your application well, but again, it's something you have to consider when you're running with these optimizing runtimes. So really, benchmarks lie. And all of the stuff here you should take with a grain of salt. You should try your own applications, try your own uh, troublesome scripts that you're, you're trying to get performance out of, uh, and make sure that it works on your code. Run your application on these runtimes, and then you'll get a better idea of what it's going to do for you in production. Uh, so let's take a look at a more realistic benchmark, an end-to-end -end Rails application. So this is, again, just a simple scaffolded blog application, but running on MySQL, so it's a little bit more real world. Um, I'm just running, I was running it on my local i7 Linux machine. Uh, here we have CRuby 3.1 with 16 workers and two threads each, which was about right to saturate the CPU. Uh, and then JRuby and Truffle Ruby running with 32 threads each in a single process. But I had some issues with Truffle Ruby, so I'll only cover that very briefly. Uh, everything's local, so that's a caveat here. I'm not running a database server on a separate machine. I'm running Siege to drive the, the web interface. Um, so there's, there's overhead from lots of things on the system. Um, MySQL's in a Docker container, so there's going to be a little bit of overhead compared to running it natively on another machine. Uh, and it is a very simple application. Uh, so I just ran Siege for 10 second intervals, gathered the uh, request per second, and then once things started to stabilize, I, I knew I was there. Okay, so let's take a look at the performance here on the blog application. Uh, 20, 2,000 requests per second is about typical for CRuby 3.1. Uh, YJIT does better here. So higher is better on this graph and gets about 2361. Again, I'm very excited to see that there is now a JIT that comes with CRuby that can give you a little bit of a boost. And I know this is going to continue to improve. Uh, and this is where I, I ran into some trouble. Uh, when I try to run heavily concurrent uh, blog app and, and hit it with 16, 32 threads all doing requests, uh, it seems to choke on this, and it, it only uses about one CPU's worth of performance. So I have a, a pending bug report that I'll file for the Truffle Ruby folks, um, and I won't really be discussing Truffle Ruby more in this benchmark. And then there's JRuby, which is comfortably twice as fast as CRuby with YJIT. Again, it's a very simple benchmark, a very simple application, uh, so you should try your own stuff. Now, being honest again, we have our uh, memory footprint. 
So this was 16 inches of sea ruby, and I'm just running with Puma. So there's minimal pre-forking, minimal cow copy on write uh, optimization here. Uh, but about 1,500 uh, megabytes, about 1.5 gigabytes on my system. Um, Truffle Ruby, despite the single threadedness of the performance, I was still using about six gigabytes. And again, that, I know that can be tuned down a bit. Um, and 1,400 megabytes for JRuby. So we've kind of passed that point where JRuby will actually be using less memory than CRuby because it's a single process. And now actually this can get better. Uh, I was able to run the same benchmark and forcing the JVM to only use a 300 megabyte heap, which then with the rest of the JVM brings it down to 950 meg. Now we're actually starting to save money in production by not requiring as much memory for all of our concurrent users. And really you can throw as many threads as you want up to the limits of the machine and still st keep within this 950 meg. Uh, warm up time, kind of similar to the Rails bench. Uh, it takes a little while for JRuby to get up and going, but once it gets there, it's, it's pretty good. And it's fast enough on this benchmark that that curve goes pretty quickly. We pass up YJIT pretty fast. Uh, so even if there is a bit of slow requests at the beginning, you will get up to performance pretty, pretty fast. All right, final area, uh, talking a little bit more low level within Active Record. Uh, we continue to improve our Active Record performance over the years, and this has been a really tough nut to crack. Active Record is very complicated, uh, but as our adapter has improved, as JRuby has improved, and as Active Record itself has reduced the amount of overhead, uh, we've started to catch up a lot. And Again, thanks in part to the JVM improvements, um, just going from Java 11 to Java 17 has given us like a 30% performance improvement on a lot of benchmarks. So we get a lot for free just by being on the JVM. All right, so select performance. Uh, these are the numbers that I got with CRuby 3.1. Uh, and then JRuby, again, close to, two and a, close to two times as fast on a simple select. Uh, so I'm doing a select benchmark then also an update benchmark, since they're probably going to be the things you are doing mostly, most in your applications. Uh, here's CRuby. Uh, here the performance is even better, uh, easily two times, two and a half times-ish, uh, compared to CRuby 3.1. So this is the kind of stuff that matters. You need to take your own applications, your own benchmarks, and run them on all these implementations to really know whether it's going to help you. So a true story, one of my favorite JRuby stories, um, some years ago, there was a large Rails application using 40 extra large instances on EC2. And if you do anything with AWS, you know this is a lot of money to pay for these all the time. Uh, 40 worker processes per server to max them out. Uh, and they were getting about 100,000 to 150 requests per minute on this, uh, 50 to 75 millisecond response times. They didn't like this. This is costing way too much money for them to scale this application up. So they took a look at JRuby. Uh, it took them a couple weeks of replacing some libraries, making some configuration changes, uh, may, making more use of threading and not running as many workers. That brought them down to 10 extra larges. So we're talking uh, a 75% reduction in your AWS costs. I think that's worth giving JRuby a try. Uh, and consistently, they were doing better than 150,000 requests per minute with lower response times. So it really is worth the effort. There is a bit of work required to move to JRuby, but it's worth it to give it a shot for your application. All right, wrapping up here. Man, 30 minutes is short. Um, so JRuby futures here. So 9.4 is out. Uh, this slide has had 9.4 coming soon on it for years now, uh, but we finally got it out there and we really want you to give it a try Report issues, let us know any issue that you have with it. It's probably not you, it's probably us. Um, maybe even submit a PR. Uh, we're trying to move more and more of our code into a, a Ruby kernel within JRuby. Uh, so a lot of times if there's a missing feature, you could probably write it in Ruby and we'll accept that as a, a, a PR for, for fixing it. Uh, lots of optimization work coming. We're going to be doing several maintenance releases very quickly now, uh, but I'm excited to get back to performance optimization. There's many different types of calls, like super and refined calls, that we don't optimize at all right now. Um, we're not doing any method splitting, like was discussed in Benoit's talk, so we'll start looking at heuristics for when it makes sense to split a method that receives a lot of blocks. 
Uh, and then there's a lot of interesting work coming up on the JVM itself. Uh, Java 19 has now shipped experimental support for native uh, native coroutines, native continuations within the JVM, which means we now can have native fiber support rather than using a thread to run that. Uh, there's also a, an early implementation of a JVM FFI that we can use. So we'll have support for native calls out of the box without maintaining our own FFI. And then of course, new JITs, new garbage collectors all the time. So JRuby on Rails future. Uh, Rails support is very stable and there are uh, lots of applications out there. Rails 7 is looking good. Uh, we've got bugs, we've got issues that we know we need to work on, but it's running and it was able to do all of the basic uh, blog, blog application uh, actions. Uh, so as your application grows, maybe you should consider JRuby. We can help your app scale up without adding more instances potentially. Uh, reduced resources, saving money. So grab me anywhere around the conference here. I'll be hanging out uh, after the talk. I'll be at karaoke tonight. Uh, but let's talk a little bit about getting your application up on JRuby. Thank you.